here. I'm at the edge of uh, Siberia Wash, Black Mountain. It's over there. And uh, Mount Wildness right there. Pretty good view of it. My camp is back there. I've been walking now for um, several hours in a circuitous route up and around and over, down and up and under. Quite a walk. Let's do the uh, good life meditation. It's my daily activity of reminding myself of my uh, uh, objectives and my pr principles. I begin with the uh, affirmation of human and civil rights, just reminding myself that uh, all human beings are equal and we must uh, afford one another the same uh, rights and um, excuse me my mind isn't, isn't quite there it's been a very taxing uh, day I've been hiking all day and really um, this rugged wilderness is, uh, is drawn me deep I, it sounds kind of silly it, it sounds too touchy-feely for my taste but it's true it's out here, I call this the great indifference. And ma'am, it sure does uh, put things into perspective. I miss my wife and daughter dearly right now. Let's get on with it. Uh, my five objectives are, um, first is the objective of the good and effective use of time. To make good use of my time through, through each day. And I've really uh, made a lot of uh, progress in that in the last year since I left social media. Um, become a reader and a writer and uh, more attentive to my uh, wife and daughter I'm, uh, more attentive at work and just feel like I'm uh, squeezing out more value in, in each day than I was before when it, <clears throat> previously it was all a matter of curating an image for others to consume and a lifestyle that I was sharing and I didn't realize how much it was like tending to, to uh, a garden at the foot of the uh, of your yard at the at your, at your yard so that the neighbors could see and all the while not in enjoying the uh, life that you've got look at that beautiful rock oh the, you can hear the rattle rattle that's my uh, rock pile right there so I really think I've made a lot of forward progress on that particular objective I can put my my hat back. I had, the wind was blowing hard up there on the hill, so I had to kind of put it behind the ears to keep the hat from blowing away. Look at that. Second objective is uh, the uh, development and maintenance of good life principles. These are the 20 that I'll talk about in just a moment. And it's important that I uh, not only develop them, but then I maintain them, which I do by every day reciting them. I like to do it verbally like this, vo you know, vocalize it, but sometimes I just do it in my head. I'll show you the landscape a little bit. I need to talk, talk well into the mic though. Three is the uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions. Simply, uh, Getting to a point where I can react well, and be in control, exercise temperance on my emotions. Like earlier, I was up on that ridge way up there, and it was windy, windy, and scary on the other side. Oh my gosh, <laughs> the view up there really freaked me out. And I had to uh, really exercise some control to uh, keep my keep my mind from wigging out a little bit. So I and I was able to. What's this? It's like a hole here. Wow, some big animal. Like a burrow there. Wonder who lives down there. Lots of ants. So that's the uh, development and maintenance of good life. No, no, no. The uh, cultivation of good emotional reactions. Next is the uh, performance of good actions. Just doing good things through the course of my life, through the course of the day. And I know what those are. Those are things that are in accord with my principles. You know, being courteous being generous, being as much as I can selfless, 
you know that's a that's a that's a that's a, um, a balancing act right there. Next one is uh, recognition. This is my last objective: is the recognition of true limits and true opportunities. I try to see what is the real. What are my real limits? Like, you know, I promise I'm 53. I'm gonna be 54 in not too long. I've probably got a good another 10 good years left, and maybe another, if I'm lucky, another 20. I'll Sorry, my camera died, <clears throat> as it's wont to do these days. Can you see that? You can I actually see it right through the crystal in a way. I don't know if it's coming through in the camera, but you can kind of see it glowing through there. Anyway, my, my camera has this way of, of dying these, lately. That's not how I found it. So, um, I have to, uh, I don't know exactly how much I cut off, but hopefully not too much. <laughs> I was talking about two limits and two opportunities. And I was saying that I know I can see the uh, edge of my life. Likewise, I can see the edge of my hiking ability. I really wanted to hike to the top of that black mountain today. Although I don't know that my internal constitution could have handled it. I think I would have wigged out a little bit if I tried. And by, and I would be coming back late, it'd be scary. Although I could hike through the night and I do have a flashlight. Um, still, it would be, that's more than I can handle. I'd be, I really would be pushing it to do that. Pushing it today. I gotta get back to that black area up there in the distance. I've already got my camp set up there. So, you know, recognizing <clears throat> my true limits so I don't overextend myself and my true opportunities so that I can, you know, make use of those. Like, I, I certainly can hike out here, but I have to uh, uh, <laughs> keep, keep, keep it between the lines, so to speak. Wow, the wind's really coming up now. Okay, let's get on to our uh, 20 principles. I'll do those by fives. The first fives, the first five is one. Principle of war. I wake up every day going to war with myself and probably everybody else as well. In particular, I'm going to war against uh, what sacred cows, <laughs> tre treasured values, things that we hold dear and true, mainly my own things. Why do I do this? Because I don't want to hold on to anything that's false. I don't want to be um, uh, living my life according to uh, principles or ideas or values that are wrong. So I go to war with everything that I think is true. And when people propose to me what they think is true, I'll, you know, challenge that. And I think it's a good use of time uh, to back into a, an objective. Next is um, the number two. reason and the sub principles of honesty and objectivity if war is what I'm after then the tool the instrument of my war is my reason the reason of course is my critical cap capabilities my my ability to think and make sense of the world and I have to be honest if I'm going to uh, be able to use that tool well and I have to be objective if I want to uh, really keep my ideas in, in, in accord with reality. Number three, the homunculus. The homunculus is the little man who lives inside my head. Actually, I'm lately calling him the little mortal who lives inside my head. But part of what the homunculus is about is two things, to, to remind me that <clears throat> my consciousness is really just another uh, uh, part of my body, like my liver and my spleen and my lungs, <clears throat> my brain provides a, a function which is conscious, among other things, regulating and running the body, but uh, riding on top of that is this consciousness that I enjoy that seems to be a, an artifact of the higher mammals, or higher animals for the most part, <clears throat> higher being, you know, with their brains more highly developed. You know, a lot of critters don't seem to have that. I mean, I don't know the plants. Yeah, plants have that. I think, you know, they're not critters necessarily, but you know what I mean, life. I don't know that they have a homunculus. They get, they get by all right. But we've got one because it serves us well in, in, our, in our way of life. 
And I need to remember that it's nothing more than a biological organ. And that, like the rest of me, it will die when I die. There you go, and I'm, I'm reminding myself that I have nothing like a soul. That's, if you talk to people, if you ask people, where is the soul, what is the soul, you won't get very satisfactory answers. You'll soon be um, uh, asked to um, suspend your critical, critical functions in, in favor of Wu, which, which, you know, violates the second principle, reason. So my homunculus is the thing that runs the show, so to speak, in terms of thinking. It's also the uh, part of me that uh, that is uh, will die when I die, and will uh, be the part of me that will no longer exist, and will <laughs> means that I better enjoy and make good use of this life while I have the opportunity, because I won't be around afterwards. At least there's no good evidence that that'll be the case. Okay, next, the home of good and evil. Good and evil don't. There's no good or evil out here. I like to always say that. Point at the wilderness and say there's no good or evil. It's because good and evil are uh, uh, constructs within our minds. They're opinions. They're ideas. It's like a piece of cake. And uh, good and evil, if they don't reside here in the landscape, where do they reside? They reside in our minds with the homunculus. It is the uh, resulting uh, piece of our, uh, of our mind being able to make sense of the world and to judge right and wrong. So but the good thing about that is that that's, uh, we, we, can, uh, we can debate with one another about that. You know, we can have ideas about what's good and good and evil are. And um, if we know that they're simply constructs within our minds, then we'll be open to, uh, uh, you know, debating it out with another person. Whereas if it's dictated by dogma or authority, then we're less likely to do so. More likely to, to take up arms against one another. I find these poles out here in the wilderness here from the mining era of the 19th century and early 20th century. Although usually I don't find anything associated with it. No mines. <laughs> Just the pole. <laughs> pole in the wilderness. There's my camp. Campo number one. You can actually see my tent from here. See the uh, wooden structure there? That's the remains of an old mine. And to the right there is my tent all set up. Ready for the night. Let's go up here on top and then we'll head down. So, number five is uh, a purpose. Given the good and evil are our own design, and the homunculus is a, a, a mortal at, attribute of our, of our biology, it makes sense to uh, ask ourselves, what is the purpose of our life? Why are we here? Well, one thing seems clear. We're here to make more of ourselves. Biology seems to run the show. So our first mandate is to uh, reproduce and to uh, raise our young ones to the point where they can take care of themselves. And then we can get out of the way and die. Mm. But what I, is there anything more? Yeah, sure. But it's up to us to decide. It's up to us to, uh, kind of like, you know, deciding what good and evil are. It's up to us to decide what our purpose is. Well, I've settled on what I think is a rather lofty goal, which is virtue. I want to live a virtuous life. I want to be a a virtuous man. So my purpose boils down to biology and virtue. I use the word biology, which is really the, the a natural science related to uh, biological organisms, but it's, it's just because I can't find a better term. Maybe reproduction, reproduction and virtue. It just doesn't have the same ring. <laughs> so I'll stick with biology and virtue for now. Okay, that's our first five. Now, the next five is uh, the atomic principle. Wait, wait for it. Oh wait, hey, there's some tuft. I can do it with that. It's volcanic ash right there. Perfect, perfect, good timing. Take a handful of this. Okay. <laughs> the atomic principle. Everything is made of bits and pieces. 
flowing and changing and forever transforming. So too you and I. Reminder that uh, very, very soon we will wink out and given that we have our homunculus, which is not immortal, we will be gone absolutely forever and our bits and pieces will fall to pieces, so to speak, you know, de degrade away and uh, become something else. Nice last shot of Mount Wildness there with the sun on it. Lovely. Take a, a close up. It's good to remember that our, our mortality is fragile. And, and our, our mortality is fleeting. Our, yeah, yeah, I like that. My friend Eric used to do that. Yeah, yeah. Miss him. Been gone a long time. Next is, uh, this is number eight. Uh, no, number seven. So, um, but what was it this way? Six was the atomic principle. Oh yeah, principle of nature. That's right. Everything has some nature. All the things in the universe have some nature. You know, the nature of a desert is to be hot and and uh, arid and uh, you know, a bit inhospitable and a bit scary to people like me nature of a business meeting is to be somewhat formal, have an agenda, uh, occupy a, a certain length of time, usually an hour or so, and um, have some resulting goal and uh, objective. Nature of a friendship has its qualities in the nature of love. All of these things. And there's my camp. My diminutive little tent. It's good to uh, recognize what the nature of things are so that we can expect nothing more than the reality of what they are. Likewise, it's good to recognize the nature of individuals. You know, what's the nature of your friend? What's the nature of your, of your spouse? Or people you interact with? Recognizing what that is, is a very useful thing. If it sounds like I'm, uh, I'm filling time on him, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to go up or down. This is the dangerous time of the evening. There's snakes starting to come out, and you have to be careful stepping in uh, rocky places like this. They could be lingering, and uh, could get a nice bite. Rattlesnake bite wouldn't be good. And I don't like walking through. I was tempted to go up there, but then I'd have a long drop down. I'll just go along here. Just be careful. Mind the snakes. Okay, let's move on. That's principle. Oh, and then... <clears throat> So, in principle of nature, recognize what the nature of things are, including our own nature, so that we can live in accordance with that. Next, um, principle of maturity, and the sub-principles of wisdom and fortitude. Maturity is that state of, of having experience and being able to utilize that experience towards uh, better ends. Let's go up here and get a view, a last view, before things go down. Maturity. And uh, you can gain it over time. If you, the longer you live, the, the more mature you become if you're willing to learn from your mistakes and remember them. You can also have some qualities of maturity if uh, you are a person that has fortitude. Basically, uh, an ability and willingness to push through towards uh, good ends. You don't necessarily have to have the wisdom to understand what the good ends are if you've got good, con good uh, counsel. Military is a good example. I don't know if it's good counsel all the time, but <laughs> they basically uh, drill into their soldiers the ability to follow orders. And the uh, supposedly wise generals tell them what to do. And the uh, fortitude that the young soldiers have helps them to uh, fulfill their goal. Yikes! That's kind of scary. Can you imagine the flash flood coming here and uh, taking that? Now I'm staying here tonight on a little island. That is a nasty flash flood channel. If a flood was to come, it would divert around me to the over there and then around this side over here, and I would be uh, in pretty good shape on a little island, so to speak. I know that because um, the fact that this miners' camp that I'm staying at has been here a long time and hasn't washed away. Let's hope tonight's not the night. <laughs> Although there's no rain in the forecast. Whoop, whoop. Okay, here we are. <sighs> wow, that's the way I came 
up from Siberia, way, way down there. Mount Wildness, back up the massive Siberia Wash, Black Mountain. Uh, oh, and then uh, the uh, Sandman's bed over there and the whole area I was exploring today. Probably not gonna lick it another day. Probably gonna go back tomorrow morning because I'm running short on water. But let's go ahead and finish up. The next is uh, after maturity comes the social principle. We're social animals. We need one another to survive, and our best ends are social ends. Next is uh, the principle of the feast of offal. Offal is the waste and byproduct of the butcher's art. You know how they take all that gooey stuff, all the guts and the entrails, and throw it away. Well, sometimes they find good use for it, making sausages and such. But for the most part, it's the secondary uh, stuff. It's, you wouldn't want to eat it wholesale. I mean, what I mean is right out if you knew what it was. Sorry, the camera shut off again. So um, the Feast of Offal, you, now you understand what I mean by Offal, but the Feast of Offal is when we consume the waste and byproduct of our own, of our own upset and the upset of others. So people get upset and frustrated and they spill it all out and we let it get to us and we take it in and we spill out some offal of our own and they consume that and it's, it's a downright, it's a feast, it's a bounty. Well, I try to remind myself not to partake of that feast. When people are having a, a, an unprincipled moment, just let them have that moment. You can be there for them as a friend and a... And a someone who cares, but I'm not going to consume the, that waste that they're spilling out and let, let it get to me such that I end up, con, you know, contributing to the feast myself. Or just consuming it and making me sick. I think you get, the, hopefully you get the metaphor, right? There's, you can see there's a campo number one and my camp number two over there too. So now moving fast, number 11 is, um, <clears throat> let's see, let me get down here safely. Number 11 is temperance and the sub-principles of suffering, simplicity, and apathy. Temperance is such a useful thing. It's our ability to uh, control our consumption of all things. <clears throat> Food, drink, <clears throat> work, play. It's a routine. I just would always say this back. And make ourselves <clears throat> control ourselves. Control how much... Uh, um, Thoughts, how many thoughts we do, how much TV we watch, how much, uh, everything, including our emotions, control our emotional, uh, that's a nice photo right there. Control our emotions. So when, someone, uh, when you feel an emotion rising up inside of you, instead of uh, running with it, instead of, you know, ah, instead, just kind of nibble at it a little bit, mm, what is that? Oh, anger, what could I be angry at? Kind of get to the bottom of it and then maybe do something about it instead of just blowing off the handle. Likewise, uh, you know, lust, you know, uh, glut, you know, the desire to eat, all those things. So here's my tent, my little uh, bivy in my backpack, all uh, set up for a three-day adventure. It's actually quite a comfortable little bivy, although it's a bit like a coffin when I zip it all up especially when I zip on that last one right there, can be a little bit claustrophobic, but it's really comfortable. Very nice. And it really is like sleeping in your own coffin. <laughs> so uh, let's, let's just go ahead and wrap things up now. I'll put the uh, camera here. <sighs> there we go. Okay, so number 12. 11 is uh, temperance. Number 12 is... Um, uh, uh, um, our agency in the great indifference. Now you just took a walk with me across the great, the, a landscape that is defined by the great indifference. That is just, you know, there is no human love or, or, or uh, uh, companionship or anything out there. It is just, that landscape out there just does not care about me one bit. That's why I call it indifference. Agency is the opposite. It's when Whoa, my rocks are falling out. It's when you and I uh, care about one another. It's agents are uh, living creatures that uh, take care of each other. And uh, you and I do that for one another. 
where we are not indifferent. We do care. You know, if I, if I, if I fall down, you're going to bend over and, and help me up. Nine times out of ten. It's a wonderful thing. So I like to contrast those two. And I come out to a place like this, and it scares the bejesus out of me. It really does. And um, go back, find this beautiful big crystal. I'm going to bring that home for my daughter. And um, then I go back, and I just, I just, I just, I just you know, revel in the society and the community that I have. Um, mainly my wife and daughter. My community isn't very large outside of that. I'm just, there's just, just not enough. That's all there is. Not enough of me. I just haven't, I haven't got me, it's got it in me. I seem to be, uh, sequ I seem to be sequestering more and more into myself as I get older. Now, number uh, 13 is, um, the uh, best seat in the house. To not want to be anyone else, be anywhere else, or be doing anything else, but be okay with just where I am. It's a kind of a tranquil contentment. I do that a lot. I try to remind myself of that. It doesn't mean that I don't try for better things, but I try to be content with what I am, where I am at the moment. Next is, um, uh, sorry, I'm a little bit exhausted. Oh yeah, the path of wildness. The path of wildness, I've actually I've been walking on the path of wildness all day today. Path of wildness is uh, basically being able to um, make a decision, a tough decision. It's when you recognize you have a tough decision to make and you allocate yourself some time to think about it before you make that decision. Now what happens when you come to the time you have to make the decision but you, you're not quite ready? Well, you have two options. You can either allocate more time or make the decision. If you can afford to allocate more time, then do so within reason. When that time comes, if, you, if it's time to make the decision now and you have no choice, you can't allocate more than make the decision. Now, if you haven't got all the facts and you're not ready to really make that decision, then that's when you can turn to your gut. I always try to avoid gut decisions. But if I can't, um, if I don't have enough facts, but the time has come, then I'll make it and inform, uh, I'll make the decision informed of my gut and uh, go for, forward. Recognizing that there's virtue in moving forward, even if it may be off of a cliff. I've got a, it's kind of cliche to say that, but it's just that I found through life that, that rather than, than, than sit on a decision for an extended period of time, sometimes it's better to make the decision and move forward. Next is, um, uh, the risk of avoiding risk. When we emerge into a young adulthood, we usually encounter some surface level risks, you know, like uh, education, uh, companionship, and, and, and finance. And we take aims to try to avoid those risks, get a, get a good education, find a spouse, and start saving money. But watch out because you may miss some deeper level things that are also important, such as uh, coming to understand who you are and living a life that, that is fulfilling uh, for the person that you are and the, the um, objectives that you would like to have for yourself. So a lot of people give up those dreams um, in favor of the um, surface level risk, surface level things, to, to make sure they don't compromise those surface level objectives. Um, that's fine, but not everybody, but some people can end up really regretting that choice later in life when they realize that they've they've had the security at the at the expense of uh, the life that they wanted to live. So watch out for that. Um, it's a rare individual that can do both. Next, um, sin and damnation. I, I'm struggling with calling this sin. I want to change it to something else because sin describes a you know a prescribed you're, you're upsetting for example you're sinning against God you're ang angering God because of uh, not following his prescribed rules but it's really a little bit different than that but I'm gonna stick with it for now I have five sins in my life that are I consider capital sins they're not capital they're really important one is uh, credulity and they're all basically credulity I mean sorry falsity falsity number two is credulity three is um, uh, uh, faith and four is superstition, and five is dogma. I, I, I hold these as sins because I believe that, uh, that uh, 
when we do these things, we're suspending our critical faculties in favor of a quick answer, of a fast answer, an easy answer that makes us, gives us comfort at the expense of the, tr uh, potentially at the expense of truth. So I would rather, uh, um, I would rather work harder to make sure that I understand better what really is true, rather than uh, simply uh, accepting things via dogma or uh, uh, being too overly eager to say yes, I agree. Uh, sorry, I'm going. I'm going to move fast. I'm getting. I'm getting worn out. I am exhausted. This is the perimeter of uh, Camp Home Number One. You can see it has a sign right here. I think I ended my last Good Life video, Good Life meditation video here, Camp Home Number One. Okay, um, that was the uh, sin and damnation. Next is uh, a complete oblivion. Now it gets easy. I can I can wrap this up quickly. Uh, complete oblivion. When we die, uh, there's no good reason to think there's anything left after that. Um, we will uh, d die, and um, our bodies will will decompose, and we will be gone forever. Now, uh, since we, it appears that there is no soul, there's nothing that survives us. Like this structure here, it'll eventually just degrade away, and in a hundred years, this will probably be well. It'll probably still be here, given that it's a desert, but in, in a little worse shape. Eventually, it'll be gone. Likewise, you and me. Yeah. Next is uh, um, no final. Um, oh yeah, yeah. And part of part of complete. Did I say complete oblivion? Yeah. Part of that is no final reunion, no final reconciliation, and no final justice. When we die, there will be no chance to to make up with the people that we've had bad, we've had upset with in life, or have some reconcil or or re have reunion with people that we wanted to see, or. Um, um, or in no justice because <laughs> we'll be gone we're outside the pale of justice then okay final final three next is uh, um, uh, the great life adventure the great life adventure is 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 one or more uh, events and seasons of time in our life when we when we strike out to 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 explore and discover ourselves and and, and, and create the stories that make our lives interesting and help us to uh, to live a fulfilling life and to basically to avoid that deeper level risk you can have as many of them as you want I really recommend it in your 20s give yourself the whole 20 your whole decade of your 20s if you can Go as far as you can with education. Have as many adventures as you want. You know, don't get anybody pregnant. There's plenty of time after your 20s to settle down, get married, and have a career. Next is um, uh, and you'll be a lot, you know, a lot, be a lot more interesting if you do. Boy, you'll be a more interesting person at a cocktail party for the uh, the the stories that you'll tell from your 20s if you live that life. And uh, almost done now. Um, but that's not the reason to do it. Uh, Oh yeah, the season of philosophy is a time of our life to record what we've learned and, and what we've experienced and to lay maybe down a, some advice for those who are to come. Yeah, that's what, this is my season of philosophy. This is what I do in making these videos and writing my blog and these types of things. And um, last one is uh, arena and utility. Every circumstance and situation in life is, a, is an arena for the uh, pursuit of our objectives and the execution of our principles and the refinement of these. So um, when you find yourself with a flat tire at the side of the road, hmm, it's an opportunity for uh, patience and temperance, tempering down those emotions. Um, when you uh, find yourself uh, getting upset at, at, uh, at someone because uh, they've been rude or, you know, or the like, it's an opportunity also for, uh, to control yourself. Uh, when you have an opportunity to, um, to, uh, to, 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 Take, take that job that will give you the security. Ask yourself, is that really what you want at this stage in your life? Or would you rather have that, that job that may uh, give you more of the fulfillment that you're after? I know that seems very 70s, very hippie, very cliche, but there's something to that. They, ha they were onto something, but don't go too far with it. And with that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock it off. The sun's about to go pass over the horizon here, and it's gonna become dark, and it's gonna be a beautiful night. No moon yet, but the moon should be coming up soon. And I should have a nice moonlit night. And here it goes. The sun's just passing right now. So uh, I wish you all well. Thanks for joining me for this uh, good life adventure. Take care. Okay, there's the moon. There's the ruins of Camp Home 1. And I'm in my tent. 
it's uh, sun isn't quite down, but I'm exhausted. I've been hiking all day plus a 200 mile an hour, 200 mile motorcycle trip yesterday in a full full day. I'm ready for bed. So sign off for now. I'll zip up in here, zip up and uh, get to sleep in my little my little coffin thing. Okay. Say good night. Thanks for joining me. Take care.